Commissioner, the, the big news when it comes to, to state aid today is that in the United States, Washington has granted U.S. airlines, 10 of them, $25 billion worth of aid. And we're all sitting here uh, amongst those of us that cover the airline sector here in Europe, wondering what is going to happen here in Europe and whether or not we can expect a similar thing and how it will work to keep a level playing field between the various nations. Well, as you will have, uh, have noticed, uh, we have had quite a, a number of, uh, of airline decisions as well uh, for exactly the same reasons. Uh, when an airline is, uh, is grounded, obviously, uh, they make no money. So we see airlines uh, coming in uh, to have the needed and very, very necessary uh, liquidity uh, also to be there when we can start flying again. Do you think it should be done at a... At the moment, it's being done on a national basis. Each individual country is making decisions based uh, on, on individual carriers. In the United States, it's going to be done at a federal level. I'm wondering whether or not we need something more clearly defined here in Europe as to whether or not one airline gets this aid and another airline gets that aid. For instance, the, the difference between France and Air France and KLM uh, and Lufthansa. The Germans don't have a particularly big travel and tourism sector. Are they going to support Lufthansa more than other nations, for instance, will support their national carriers? Well, what we do uh, when we take a, a state aid decision is exactly to make sure that when uh, when a member state wants to set up um, an aid measure, is exactly to make sure that they are in line. Uh, of course, these aid measures, they're different because these are different airlines, they have a different structure, uh, they're different size, uh, they are different um, uh, ports of call. Uh, so in that respect, uh, our system allows for tailor-made uh, assistance uh, to what the airlines need while at the same time sort of keeping broadly uh, on track uh, to having a single market that is less fragmented than what we would otherwise have had. What would you be pushing for, Commissioner? Is liquidity assistance better, for example, than direct state aid? And I'm not just talking airlines now. I'm broadening this out to all sectors, particularly tourism and entertainment. Well, it's... it's it depends quite a lot uh, on how long this will take. Uh, the first sort of wave of measures uh, was, of course, liquidity. In enormous amounts uh, of liquidity have been made available. It may be so uh, that later uh, recapitalization uh, may be needed. Uh, and here we're just consulting on, on common European framework uh, if that is needed in order to make sure that if member states uh, would want to recapitalize businesses, that it's done in the same way that we maintain a level playing field, that we try to limit the distortion of competition. Uh, and, and, well, we've had quite positive uh, response to that uh, with member states, but it will take still some days before we're ready to launch it. You did turn a few heads with your interview with the FT a few days ago in which you advocated for states taking stakes in companies in order to keep China from taking over some of those companies. Is that how you feel still a few days later, Commissioner? I think it's very, very important that, that we are vigilant uh, because we have come into this health crisis uh, in different points in time. We are suffering from it to a different degree uh, in every point in time because things develop. You see some countries, they, they open. Some countries are still deep in the crisis and people are really suffering. And that also means that in the economic recovery, some will be stronger before others have fully recovered. And that, of course, gives a risk that businesses may be vulnerable for a hostile takeover. And I think it's very important not to be naive uh, in these days, uh, because a number of sectors, they are strategic. A number of sectors are indeed needed. And here, I think it's important both for the businesses to know that the states can step in if uh, they want to and if need be, but also for the potential uh, people who want to do a hostile takeover, that we are vigilant and that we will use the tools that we have available.
Commissioner, kind of picking up on that, um, you, you have in place at the moment a temporary framework that is allowing greater flexibility when it comes to the state aid rules to, to protect businesses that are being affected by the virus, to protect businesses that potentially uh, could be subject to such a takeover. I'm wondering how long you see that temporary framework being in place uh, and when the, the sort of the temporary element ends, whether or not you see need, needed changes to the current longer term framework when it comes to competition commission, uh, sorry, competition uh, within Europe. Well, first and foremost, we, we have already changed the temporary framework uh, once uh, to enable more uh, aid to uh, coronavirus research uh, production to make sure that businesses who change their production into, for instance, protective gear, that they can get a no loss guarantee. Now we're in the process of, uh, of changing it uh, to uh, enable recapitalization in a way that limits, limits distortion of competition. But the entire framework is set to be in place uh, until the end of the year. But of course, we will evaluate uh, when we get on the other side of summer if it's needed to be prolonged. At the same time, we're in the process of looking into all our uh, rules and guidelines in order to make sure that they are fit for purpose, because it's still a digital economy. It's still an economy where automatization, uh, technology is changing not only how we produce, but also business models. And it's very important that competition rules are fit for that purpose. Uh, and that, I think, will be as relevant uh, on the other side of, uh, of the corona crisis as it was before. Commissioner, can I ask you a slightly bigger picture question? Um, there is a lot of concern around the world at the moment within financial markets that, that Europe, the Eurozone, the, the EU is not getting its act together in, in acting in a common way in dealing with this crisis. The, the peripheral economies are not being given the, the assistance that they require. The debt mutualization is now necessary. Um, now, clearly, this is, this is kind of within the bailiwick on the other side of the road uh, of the European Council. But nevertheless, do you think Europe needs to have more solidarity right now than is currently being demonstrated? Well, I think it's very important to see how it has changed over the last weeks because it was quite disheartening to see sort of the first response because there every member state turned inwards. Uh, that has changed a lot. Uh, if you take what comes from the uh, ECB, the result of the Eurogroup uh, meeting last week, uh, sort of the, the reinsurance of, uh, of short-term um, uh, unemployment, employment, the Kurzarbeit scheme that we called uh, SURE, uh, the support for, for businesses as such, you see that it's sort of a, a solidarity that, that's emerging. Mm. And everyone realizes that this is a very, very different crisis from the financial crisis. Because you do not have the moral um, hazard as you had. This is something that could have happened to anyone, being north, south, east, west. And I think that is the important point, uh, because in Europe we really need each other to come together, because then we can weather this crisis and come out uh, on the other side with a restructured economy, living up to our ambitions about uh, greening our economy, being a climate neutral continent, and making the best use of, uh, of digital technology. And that I see emerging from a very slow start. Uh, but definitely, and still much, much better uh, than what you saw in the first weeks and months uh, after the financial crisis. 